Hey guys, this is going to be my review of Star Trek Discovery Season 3, Episode 8. The episode is called Sanctuary. So the last few episodes have certainly been hit and miss for me. And this one's pretty meh. This is one of my least favourite of the season so far. It's mostly to do with the main plot. The main plot is that Book is contacted by his planet he receives a message from his brother that there's an emergency on the planet so michael and book both beam down to the planet it's that thing of you know michael wants to see his home country you know meet his family and stuff and it's revealed quickly that there's been this long rift between book book and his brother so there's some animosity, but also then that the planet has been taken over by the Emerald Chain regime and they've, you know, enslaved the planet, held the planet hostage. And so what happens is Rin, who, of course, escaped, you know, slavery along with Book in a previous episode and has been in the care of Discovery, he is now wanted by this regime. They want him back. And so Book's brother effectively like turns on him, like sets him up and is demanding for for the safety of the planet. Then he hands over Rin. And there's some kind of racial like stuff brought up here where Book's brother is kind of saying, well, why are you protecting this, this, you know, other life form sort of thing? And of course it goes to Book's, you know, partly being a, uh, you know, in favour of, you know, endangered species and all the rest of it. But that's the conflict Then Book's brother is basically saying, you know, they're threatening to destroy our planet if, if we don't get Rin. So it's a hand him over. And Book is obviously standing firm and there's a whole conflict and debate between them. And obviously it works on both them because Discovery is also being pressured to, to let Rin go. Um, and there's this mystery over the course of the episode exactly why they want Rin so badly. And Rin won't give up that in information to Saru, which obviously could help Discovery make an informed decision but yeah book's brother's family is then threatened he's got a young son and the commander of of you know the emerald chain she says well if if we don't get rim we're going to start blowing up the planet so obviously puts people in danger and at one point they sort of start doing that and it's this whole sort of conflict, as I said, and part of the, the problem with, with Discovery's issues is that they are limited because, again, the Abnor has demanded that they don't use their, their sort of servers for, for anything which isn't sort of signed off on him. He says, you know, we've got more important plans for that in the future. So, and it's an unauthorized ship, essentially, even though they're using it as as a base sort of thing. You know, it's unauthorized to to carry out such a, such an act. Um, so there's this twist where, or this idea that Tilly has, and I think it's a way to obviously like utilize her being quite active as like acting number two at the moment where she she actually finds a loophole where she says well and she nods to Kayla but then we could use like a pilot um on an authorized star starfleet vessel so the the suggestion is that Kayla flies flies the vessel and it's an authorized one so it's sort of twofold basically Kayla would only be acting on un, under orders so if things went bad or if if they if this came out she wouldn't get any 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 shit basically it would be on Saru and probably Tilly but and at the same time technically they're using an authorized ship so that they kind of get away around it that way and the other thing it does is that it's a character beat for Kayla because she's had this this trauma earlier in the season has still been getting over it and Tilly knows this and and it's a way for Tilly to sort of motivate um 
okay there is almost like the action saru took with with tilly but in a different sort of way so i quite like that actually as a character beat for kayla and we find out a couple things about rin when he obviously goes on this on the ship with kayla um and they essentially try to protect them the planet is uh, and it's a couple of reveals which aren't that strong to be honest or that interesting we we find out kayla kind of gets from him that that he defined the regime and that's partly why they're after him as like vengeance for that but also we hear later than that they want dilithium really badly they're starting to run out and so they they need workers <laughs> so they need more slaves again basically they need rin back so a couple of things there which aren't weren't that sort of interesting as i said the character beat for kayla works quite well i think at times the effects are a bit too flashy in the episode that's something i found quite distracting when when you had like these sort of battle sequences or like the planet sort of being destroyed by by the um the commander of 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 chan but in the end they they beam up you know book's brother and his son and and they they obviously they've got safety for the time being they get them out of there i i think the most boring part was just the stuff with book and his brother i found his brother quite annoying and whiny and it was just again this predictably forced sort of conflict that just wasn't very interesting it, it was kind of bland and a, a bit wooden um so the stuff with them they have a fight and and it's just, yeah it's just a little bit cliched and i i was never really interested in in books brother obviously i like book a fair bit um another thing that that comes out of it is that that book now wants to be a starfleet officer he has kind of seen that that as being like like a, a worthy sort of cause and, and says that to michael so that's something which could work quite well i think it, it it's sort of a good way to give books character purpose and keep him around and and it's obviously something they're maybe planting the seeds for for a season four so i'm kind of fine with that i'm i'm iffy on book and his relationship sorry not book i quite like book but the relationship with michael in general that's that's not 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 that inspiring but book as a character i quite like and i think there's potential in him becoming a starfleet officer but yeah the stuff on the planet and and all the rest of it it took up a lot of the episode so uh, it was pretty weak stuff overall i, I think um now obviously one of the big plots is then there's or, or subplots i guess is then they deal with transgender issues because of course um it's revealed that um adira is is you know transgender she comes out to stance in this episode and they do this in a clever way actually because they're um basically they're asking stance and adira to to compare the data to examine the data the black box data with the new data that that michael got last week and stance sort of suggests you know yeah adira's and refers to it to adira as a as a she and adira then correct corrects him and and basically comes out as being transgendered and obviously a whole part of the internet is going to lose its shit over this and it's utterly ridiculous um especially in star trek a show which is you know it has a history of diversity and dealing with these things and kind of moving things forward in that sense so on this show more more than any it, it makes sense to be dealing with this sort of thing especially in 2020 when when it is you know a big issue probably probably more than ever but the way they handle it in this episode i do quite like i don't think they beat you over the head with it 
And it's actually quite a clever reveal because obviously what's happened is that she's having issues now because they've lo she's lost her boyfriend essentially, but he's he's not talking to her anymore. Like the essence of him has disappeared, and obviously they're they're sort of relying on 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 that to to try and crack this sort of code. And again, they talk about it being like musical notes, and that's something which has been set up and which she obviously recognised from him. But it's actually quite a good way to bring out a transgender plot because essentially it's about having two two identities to yourself almost and then kind of conflicting but they make a whole and she's lost one of those identities so it's actually we'll see how they handle it from here i mean it could become a bit heavy-handed or it could sort of bog down the season but but so far i like the way they've handled it as i said it was quite a clever little turn and it wasn't too over the top um I think her and Stance have decent chemistry as well, so I'm quite enjoying their pairing. So, so far, it's it's been handled quite well. Not for the first time, Giorgio is the standout in the episode. She has some great lines interacting with the Doctor because they're now like examining her to do with these blackouts, which she keeps having, which she can't explain. And so the Doctor is like honest about her how she will deteriorate if she doesn't get help or if they don't find out what what exactly is going on. And Giorgio being classic Giorgio is just fantastic. You know, she just says, you don't scare me. And she comes out with things like, you know, if I had had more time, I would poison your children. And fair play to the doctor, because he stands up to it and just replies, well, if I had more time, I would have a family, basically, or I would have children. So it's like quite a smart little gag about him being gay, essentially. Um, and later on, when Giorgio essentially has been put under, because to examine her mind, she sort of comes out of it because she's having like these these really aggressive nightmares actually and she kind of flat flat lines almost and, and just comes out and says i was having a beautiful dream of what your head would look like on my wall classic georgia it's fantastic it's like the absurdity of it is what makes it so good but as i said the doctor stands firm and that's an ongoing storyline um he again he he's he handled her very well because at this point i think they all know kind of how to handle giorgio but there's almost a charm that if giorgio wasn't coming out with these you know off the cut cuff sort of like rebellious sort of lines then it wouldn't quite be giorgio so obviously we'll see how that transpires that plot and what the reveal is um I think that's pretty much is it. I mean, there's little things with, with like Saru trying to figure out ways, to, you know, like phrases, how, how he should, what he should say if he wants them to like execute a mission or wants them to attack. Or, and it's very self-known because, of course, the history of Star Trek is then, then they obviously, the captain tends to have a set phrase for it, like engage with, with um, Picard. So it's a nice little joke, and, and it, it works well enough because it's like he's still trying to find his way as captain. So at one point he says, like, execute, and, and he's getting funny little looks from the crew. So so I like that moment. But overall, it's a pretty weak, forgettable episode with some good moments from the supporting like cast and stories. Um I think that's the problem. It's the fact that the main plot was kind of bland and didn't do much for me. So overall that dragged the episode down. But we we'll obviously see where where they're going with this because at the moment this season I think the last few episodes have been hit and miss. So I think this season is in danger of becoming kind of mediocre and middle of the road and and not stand not living up to those early episodes because the first three or four episodes i really enjoyed and i thought we were on course for the best season so far um and since then it hasn't really lived up to that i think definitely it's going to be better than season one i think season one 
is the weakest season and I, I don't think this season is is as sort of bad as season one. Season two was an improvement still with issues. Um, but yeah, this season I can see being very similar to season two where it, it it's not quite great or, or it doesn't quite live up to the building. It, you know, it's very watchable, maybe very solid but never quite as good as it could be. Um, and I guess it all depends on how they develop the next few episodes as you get into the back half of the season, what they do, what reveals they have, and how they handle it. Because obviously if if they hit the ground running again or or they really nail the landing let's say you know and have a good end to the season i think that could elevate it quite a bit um because obviously there's there's good things in the last few episodes but they have been very hit and miss and then this one i think is maybe my least favorite of the season or, or certainly one of them um but yeah hit and miss um, at the moment unfortunately but let me know your thoughts on Star Trek Discovery Season 3 on this episode, what you thought of it overall. Like and subscribe if you are new to the channel. Help me to keep this content keep coming and support the channel. But for now, thanks for listening and I'll be back with more Star Trek Discovery reviews soon. Thanks. See you later. Goodbye.